Hello and welcome to this edition of Mark in the Park, where we talk about Urbana Park District, various events and planning and all the things that you need to know about your park system here in Urbana. Remember, at Urbana Park District, you belong here. I'm Mark Schultz, and I'm glad to be joined today by Derek Liebert, Superintendent of Planning and Operations at Urbana Park District. How are you this great day? I'm great. Thank you, Mark. Very good. And uh, today we're going to talk about what I sometimes call the flying rats. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about all you geese lovers out there. Geese and uh, the, the uh, too many geese at Crystal Lake Park. So let's jump right into there. Um, how many geese is too many geese at Crystal Lake Park, and has the problem been rising over the over the years? Yeah, good question, Mark. Right now, we have over eighty uh, pairs of ge uh, eighty individual geese in Crystal Lake Park. Uh, we we've had over a hundred at one point. Uh, in terms of is there you know, too many? Is there a number that we're targeting? We've been working with a group called Wild Goose Chase out of Chicago. Uh, they provide goose management services as well as other wildlife uh, management services. And we've, we feel like a, a good number for our park would be 30 to 40 geese. Uh, we don't think we'll get there right away, uh, but, but we, we realize that we have real impact uh, with the geese today. Um, we're seeing uh, each goose produces up to a pound or two of feces a day. And so there's a real concern in terms of how that impacts the park. And I know we'll get into some of those impacts later on, but uh, we've, we've begun managing the geese. and. Ultimately, we'd like to see these numbers drop to, to a lower, more sustainable number. So right now, there are double or maybe a little more than double the, pop, the ideal population of geese at Crystal Lake. That, that's our opinion, mm -hmm. wow. based upon our consultation with the experts. Now, why? Why so many geese? Well, uh, historically, uh, this subspecies, the, the, the uh, giant Canada goose, uh, was nearly extinct. Uh, and uh, it was brought back. Uh, through a captive rearing program uh, up in Minnesota. Uh, they were reintroduced and uh, as, as folks are well aware, they, they've done very well. Um, they're particularly well suited to urban environments. Uh, we find that in an area where you have a lot of lawn, you have water that provides uh, protection uh, for them to sleep in at night, but also during the molting season when they can't fly. Uh, and then you have generally a lack of predation. Uh, the, the numbers can escalate pretty rapidly. And so what we're seeing is uh, sort of exponential growth in a lot of areas, uh, and left unmanaged, uh, the, the impacts can be pretty serious. I, I do want to note that, that uh, we, we, we very much enjoy having uh, wildlife in the park. Uh, a lot of folks do enjoy the Canada geese, and again, it's not our goal to get rid of them entirely, really to get them to more sustainable numbers that are healthy for the park, uh, the park visitors, and for staff. And uh, these geese don't migrate anymore. Not really. No, that we call them resident geese. Uh, they will occasionally migrate uh, short distances. If a water body freezes up over the winter, they'll find somewhere that's open. Uh, there's still a lot of water bodies in our area that are open through the winter. Uh, a lot of our retention ponds uh, receive salt inputs from parking lot applications. And even in Crystal Lake Park, we often have openings right through the winter, uh, except the, the really, really severe winters. Now, why are these geese a problem for Crystal Lake Park? I mentioned the, the, the fecal deposits. Uh, you know, we have areas where we have day camps. Uh, we have the boating uh, operations. We have picnic areas. And so the geese are, you know, they, they don't really care where they, where they leave their droppings. They leave them everywhere. And it gets to be uh, a real impact. There are some, some health concerns uh, if you're picnicking in an area like that. Uh, staff will power wash off the boat docks and become exposed to some of this material. Um, but then ultimately, the, this material it goes into the lake, and there's water quality concerns. We're seeing an increase in algal blooms. Uh, and what's really happened is it, it's, the impact has accumulated over time. And so now, you know, 10, 15 years of these high goose numbers, we're seeing some, some nuisance algal blooms that are actually contributing to, to some concern with toxicity of the lake at times. Not all the time, but we've had two instances where we've had to temporarily close the lake. Uh, and, and the geese are part of that problem. There's other inputs as well that are, that are fertilizing our lake, but, but they're part of the problem. And so uh, getting those numbers to a more sustainable level will help with water quality and overall park enjoyment. Uh, it was about five years ago we talked with our advisory committee. We have a citizen advisory committee about Crystal Lake Park in general. And I think the one issue that, that people really uh, kind of all focused on was the, the geese near impact on the park. Uh, folks love going to Crystal Lake Park, but it's kind of the point now where it's, it's a little bit foul, no pun intended. Mm -hmm. And two, the geese can be aggressive if you happen to walk upon their nest. They can be. Uh, during nesting season in particular, uh, they can be uh, pretty aggressive. Uh, and so it's, uh, 
We haven't heard of anybody actually getting injured by a goose attack, uh, but uh, um, we, we, we know that pe they can certainly be intimidating if you're there with kids. Uh, it's a real concern. And they're not afraid of humans. They're not. They're, they're very acclimated. Cars. That's right. Yeah. <clears throat> we do have a lot of reports of the geese uh, causing traffic impacts, not just around Crystal Lake Park, but throughout the community. A flock of geese walk across. I, this happened to me while I was driving through Crystal Lake. A flock of geese were walking across the road, and we all dutifully stopped because we didn't want to run over the family of geese. And they were walking, and they stopped in the road. And they looked at the car, and the look on the goose's face, I swear that goose was thinking, what are you going to do about it? Yeah, I'm, yeah. It's my road. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they are surprisingly uh, intelligent animals. Uh, we have a lot of respect for them. Uh, the group that we train with, Wild Goose Chase, has a lot of respect for them. They, they recognize uh, some of our staff now that are uh, more actively involved in, in the management protocol. Uh, and so um, I, I, I have no doubt that they're looking you down, Mark, and saying, <laughs> what are you going to do about it? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Derek Liebert, Superintendent of Planning and Operations, our guest today on Mark in the Park. We're talking about goose management at Crystal Lake Park, which has become quite an issue over the past few years. But Urbana Park District hasn't just begun trying to manage the goose population. We've tried several different uh, methods to get those geese out of here. We have. Uh, it was about five years ago uh, when we, we really took uh, it to heart uh, after the advisory committee suggested to us that we should do more uh, and, and we had been prior I mean, we, we'd started a, a don't feed the geese campaign um, but but we decided it was time to, to, to learn a whole lot more and we didn't want to do this alone we realized that the the goose population is not just a problem at Crystal Lake Park it's throughout the community and so we invited a, a gentleman down from the Illinois Department of Natural Resources his name is Roy Damaslecki and he is the uh, urban wild wild I'm sorry urban waterfowl uh, project manager and so he, mm -hmm. he manages geese throughout the state and and he presented to our, our, our group uh, we had folks from the Forest Preserve District uh, the cities uh, folks from homeowner associations with ponds on, on the, the, the current state of goose management and the take, takeaway was that it's rarely one thing that will take care of uh, a goose problem it's a, it's a suite of approaches <clears throat> and we've been using those uh, over the years uh, we've added a few more tools uh, through the years uh, we started out with doing some uh, sprays around some of our turf areas where the geese frequent, especially around the lake house. Uh, and those sprays uh, are on the, the grass, and when the goose eats the grass, uh, they get a little bit of distress in their stomach. Uh, and there's also a, a, a UV chemical in that spray that the geese can see, but people can't. So they associate that with having eaten that area, and they know to go elsewhere. Now that, that requires that you don't spray the entire park because they will acclimate over time. So we've really targeted that application there. We've also uh, used some fencing in areas like around the boat docks uh, to help to limit uh, their ability to hop up on the boat docks and, and, and leave their deposits. Uh, we've used some decoys uh, which require daily movement to be effective, sometimes more than once a day. Otherwise they get to, again, they're smart animals. They, they begin to realize that those are just plastic coyotes. Um, we have uh, done um, some work with like uh, just other kind of creative things. We put pinwheels out on our boats at times to try to distract the geese. Um, and, and then about four years ago, uh, through the recommendation of the Department of Natural Resources, we started an egg depredation program. It's basically an egg nest management program. Now what's that all about? Well, it's, uh, it's a program that is uh, endorsed, uh, condoned uh, by both the National Humane Society and PETA. Uh, we were trained on this program by Wild Goose Chase. And it re what, what the program entails, and it's also under permit by the Department of Natural Resources, that staff go out uh, through the, the nesting season periodically, and they visit nests. And we, we mark, mark each nest, we map them, so we know when they were first started, and we begin to carefully timing our visits uh, so that we are uh, managing the eggs uh, before uh, they be begin to become uh, viable. And so we pr produce a, a, essentially a, a float test uh, where we float the eggs, and if the eggs uh, float, uh, we just return them to the nest uh, and they become chicks. Uh, if, if they don't float, uh, then we uh, put them into an oil bath and uh, then we place them back in the nest and, and they don't advance. And so use the, using that program, we've been able to reduce uh, the number of new geese in the parks. Uh, you know, we mentioned before their exponential growth. Um, however, uh, we still have a lot of nests outside the park and uh, we have some of the best habitat in, in Champaign County and Crystal Lake Park, and so we still find that some families still migrate in. Um, but it is a, a program that we, we follow carefully uh, using the same uh, guidelines that uh, 
the folks at PETA and the National Humane Society have endorsed. And there is a publication of folks who are interested in learning out more about it. Uh, this is uh, from the National Humane Society, and I think uh, Mark will be putting this up on the website Absolutely. for you all to look at. Yep, we'll put that link up there from uh, the Humane Society so you can talk about the goose uh, management, the nest management procedure. But just to let people know again, there's a test to see if the egg is viable. Correct. If the egg floats, it's, there, there's a chicken there, mm -hmm. and uh, you're, you won't, you know, <laughs> that ship has sailed, and that will that egg will hatch. But if that's right, but if it doesn't float, the egg is not yet viable, and there's an oil bath, and that just degrades the egg, and it won't become viable. Exactly right. Yeah. So you've done all that, but the geese are still here. So now we go on to the border collies. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. So this this year, for the first time, we've introduced uh, a dog service, and it's been something we've been interested in uh, for a long time. It's it's one of the the. the um, it's probably one of the best things that folks can do uh, to, to manage goose populations. For us, the limitation has always been the cost. Uh, the programs we were aware of were all out of the Chicagoland area or Indianapolis. Um, we began becoming aware of somebody local who was working dogs at golf courses about a year ago uh, and found that they were also branching out and doing some work with some of the homeowner association apartment complexes. Uh, and then uh, this winter, I uh, had the chance to meet with him and learned that he is interested in, in, in developing a business out of this and uh, worked with both he, his name is uh, Miguel, uh, and his dog Max uh, on a protocol uh, with the Wild Goose Chase Company out of Chicago that specifically uh, targets our park and our geese. Uh, and so you know, th the goal of our program is to keep the geese out of some really key priority areas. Uh, we mentioned them before, uh, we've got the, the picnic grounds, uh, the area where the camps are, we have the boating dock operations, a few really frequently used trails, um, but ultimately not, not to push the geese out entirely. Uh, we, we still think there are other areas in the park that are suitable for them, uh, and we don't want to create a, a nuisance for our neighbors. Uh, gradually, uh, through the, the, the dog program, we do hope to see our numbers drop off uh, slowly as, as some of the younger geese that have less affinity for Crystal Lake Park might move on, uh, but it's not our goal to, 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 to move them out entirely right overnight. Now, uh, what does this dog do? Well, he, uh, he, he does a couple things. Uh, he, when he sees independent uh, adult geese, uh, or, 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 or herd of geese, if you will, uh, he will begin sort of a, a low crouch position, uh, and that alerts the, the geese to his presence, and that he is, he's, he's, he's keen to them. Uh, he, he, he gives them um, a, a stare uh, mm -hmm. that, 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 uh, that alerts them that, that they're now in danger. Um, and a lot of times, that alone, uh, the geese will, will fly off. Um, if that doesn't uh, get them to fly off, the, the dog is released by the trainer uh, to run towards the geese, and then he'll, he'll halt the, the, the dog with a, a heel command before it gets close and come back and then begin uh, managing other, other flocks. And so it's really a herding behavior. Uh, border collies are, are herding dogs, and it, it, it's a, the, the dog enjoys the work. Uh, he, he, he looks forward to it. Uh, and. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's really kind of a, a, a very humane way to manage geese uh, in, a, in an environment where you don't have predation. So when uh, the border collie crouches, it looks like a predator mm -hmm. in the crouch position ready to attack. Mm -hmm. So the geese instincts is say, get me out of here. Correct. I'm going to leave. Or he'll charge at the geese and that'll scare them off. Mm -hmm. He doesn't ever contact the geese. He doesn't bite them. He doesn't catch them. And kill them. No, absolutely. These are, these are federally protected animals. And so it's, uh, it would, uh, it's very clear uh, in, through his training program and through our contract that that's not allowed. Uh, and uh, it, would, it would be you know, uh, basically an unlawful act if that were to happen. And we, we, he knows that he shouldn't. He would never want to. And so uh, if folks were to see anything like that, we'd love to hear about it, but we're confident it won't happen. Uh, furthermore, uh, with, with the, the goslings, um, we have added uh, an additional level of, of assurance uh, that the, the dog will always be on a long leash if there's goslings around. Uh, we are, are confident that there would never be an incident where the dog came into contact with the goslings, but really for, for just the public and families that are out there, a lot of kids, you know, they're very cute little birds and people become attached to them. We don't want them to think that they're ever in danger and so adding the long leash just adds that actual additional assurance. Now this is a very highly trained handler and a very highly trained dog. So <clears throat> they've been put through their paces well before the park district hires them. They have been, yeah. So uh, they, they go through a program. Uh, it's through the, uh, it's called uh, NACOA. It's the National Wildlife Control Operator Association. 
and uh, it's a goose academy, uh, and, and they're trained in all the specifics about what's allowed, um, the federal protections, how to train the dog to best manage the goose population, and, and uh, uh, Miguel and, and his dog have been through that program. Um, it, the dog is, is specifically trained for this task, uh, so it, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's an approach that's been done for a long time. You know, park and recreation agencies are, are sort of new to the field of, of, of wildlife management, particularly with geese, um, but elsewhere, uh, airports, um, golf courses, uh, you know, even fisheries, they've been managing uh, bird and wildlife populations for a long time, and so we're, we're really sort of using some of the tools that have been in place for a long time, and, and, and the dog is, is one of the best ones out there. Dog specially trained, certified, all that to say is don't bring your own dog to Crystal Lake Park and turn him or her loose on the geese. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, I know folks want to help, uh, and, and folks may have a, a dog at home, they think, but my dog would love to do that. Um, but there is a leash law in Urbana, and so uh, unless your dog is permitted by the park district to do this work, they, they shouldn't be off leash. And furthermore, uh, these are protected animals that should only be managed by a trained dog and handler. How much uh, does this contract cost the park district? Well, we so we've developed this protocol, uh, and right now we're uh, having a variety of different uh, visits throughout the season based upon the biology of the of, of the geese. And so, uh, ultimately, we have a not to exceed contract for five thousand uh, dollars. We'll be evaluating that throughout the this this year to see how things go. It's possible that we may uh, cut back or or add services depending on what we see. Uh, how effective the program is, and, and if there are areas that we need to, to add services, we, we might consider it. How often will the dog visit Crystal Lake? Right now, it's uh, daily, two to three times a day. Uh, and as soon as the, the geese get into molt season, when they can't fly anymore, uh, they'll be all in the lake. Uh, we'll reduce services. It'll probably be about uh, three times a week at that point. And again, we'll be evaluating this throughout. Uh, at that point, we'll really be keyed on just a few targeted areas, like the boat docks, where we want to keep the geese away. Really, we're, we're training the geese uh, to, to avoid some of these areas. So it depends on just the time of season and the. And I didn't know geese molt, and when they molt, they can't fly. Correct. So, uh, yeah, yeah. They have to be on the water the whole time. Or, or walking, but but they're more they're more safe on the water. Yeah. And uh, um, what do you say to the people who might be around Crystal Lake Park? Gee, thanks, you're chasing your uh, geese onto my property. Yeah, well, again, that, that is not our goal. Uh, our goal is to manage uh, geese that they are trained not to visit some of these areas where we're seeing the highest impacts. Uh, we, have, we have the most concerns, areas where we picnic, where we have day camps, where we have the boating operations and frequently used trails. Um, we do expect that over time uh, we'll see a reduced number of geese, but if we're not trying to push geese onto our immediate neighbors. That, that's not the goal of the program at all. So the goal is... The, it, it's not the goal to have zero geese at Crystal Lake Park. Correct. It's just to get the population in balance. Exactly right. And uh, well, do you think it'll work? I think it will. Uh, it, it's you know, it's uh, this is the, the 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 next and best thing that we have available to us. Uh, there are a few more things that we're considering, uh, and and one of them is is, is going to be happening soon. We're going to be restoring sections of the lake edge, removing a lot of the invasive brush and some of the eroded areas where the geese have trampled down and eaten all the grass and replanting it with a, a shorter native grass, uh, taller than turf grass, uh, that the geese would need to walk through in order to get to the lake. And uh, that is a deterrent as well. They're concerned about predation in an environment like that, and that'll help. Uh, we've seen that done a lot uh, elsewhere with success. Um, and beyond that, you know, we're not really considering anything else at this point. Uh, I always like to let people be aware that there are folks out there that <laughs> work with the Department of Agriculture and the Department of Natural Resources to do culling programs. Uh, it's nothing we're considering at this time. We, we would like to try everything else available to us before we'd even consider something like that. So uh, for the goose hunting enthusiasts, we're not there yet? Not there yet, no. no. Now, if, go, go ahead. I was going to mention that there have been some adjustments made uh, statewide. Uh, they have uh, adjusted what they call the, the nuisance uh, goose season, which is, as I understand it, in the fall. A lot of these geese will go out into the, the fields in the fall to eat the, the, the wasted and spent grain that wasn't collected by farmers. Uh, and at that time, uh, they're actually expanding the season for some of these geese and, and the, the uh, hunters can take more birds. And so um, that is one of the things that's being done at a state level to reduce the overall population of these resident geese. Now, if anybody has have any questions or concerns or 
Any suggestions about uh, goose management? How can they get a hold of you? Well, uh, either by calling uh, the office. Uh, I'm in the Planning and Operations Department. It's 217-344-9583. I'm at extension 201. Or you can email me. Uh, the email's on our website. Uh, but I always like, a, like phone calls. It gives us a chance to talk more about uh, what we're doing. And uh, invariably, folks uh, have tried something on their own that they, they want us to consider. And uh, we're, we're all ears. So... Uh, we're doing our next step in uh, goose control at Crystal Lake Park, and here's hoping it works out. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. Derek, Derek Liebert, thank you for joining us today. Certainly. Derek Liebert, Superintendent of Planning and Operations, has been our guest on Mark in the Park, talking about goose population control at Crystal Lake Park. We don't want to get rid of all the geese. We just need to bring the population back in balance, make sure the goose doesn't poop on the boats at our boat dock. Uh, remember, at Urbana Park District, you belong here. Be sure to uh, participate if you have any ideas on goose population control. Again, I'm Mark Schultz. Thanks for joining us.